Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to my chemistry lessons. The topic of this video is orbitals and quantum numbers. We have studied in the earlier videos about the Bohr's atomic model where he said that there are orbits around the nucleus and these orbits are fixed paths along which an electron travels. And we are aware that this was not true because electrons have particle and wave-like nature and it is impossible for electrons to travel in fixed orbits. And if we knew the orbit, we would not know where the electron is according to the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So taking into consideration the wave nature, wave and particle duality of uh, electrons and subatomic particles, the quantum mechanical model was given. Schrodinger gave his equation, which was H psi is equal to E psi, where H is the Hamiltonian operator, a mathematical operator, and psi is the wave function. When you solve the Schrodinger wave equation, we get the value of psi, and the different values of psi, they lead us to these four quantum numbers. And these four quantum numbers give us the exact address of each and every electron in an atom. Now I would like you to imagine what an atom is like. Imagine the orbits given by Bohr and think that if orbits like circular orbits, concentric circles, that is how an atom was, then uh, an atom would have been flat if they were concentric circles but uh, an atom cannot be flat or else the entire universe would have been flat. So that's not so. So now you can imagine these uh, orbits. Let us not call them orbits. Let's call them shells. And I would like, when we use the word shell, I would like you to imagine an eggshell. An eggshell has the entire egg inside it, right? So a shell, an atomic shell energy level, should have the electrons which have that energy trapped inside it. But this shell is not a physical shell. You do not have eggs inside an egg, uh, inside an atom. Therefore, this shell is only imaginary. And I would like you to imagine that 90% of chances of finding the electron would be within this, within this shell, this imaginary shell. As the energy increases, one shell over the next shell and the next shell and the next shell. So you have shells increasing in size as the energy increases. And each shell has electrons in it. But these electrons do not have the same energy. These shells themselves have divisions. They also have subshells inside them. So they have, these shells can be the first shell, second shell, third shell, fourth shell. These shells further have divisions which are called subshells. Now each subshell further is divided into orbitals. You can imagine a building, an apartment building, where the building is, uh, the different floors are the different energy levels. The subshells are apartments and each apartment has its own orbitals. So each, each floor is a shell, each apartment is a subshell, and each room in each apartment is an orbital. I hope that makes it clear that the shells have subshells. The subshells are further divided into orbitals. And each room in that apartment is occupied by two people. Each room is occupied by two people. So each orbital in an atom is occupied by two electrons. It has a maximum capacity of two electrons. An orbital cannot have more than two electrons. So this is how you should imagine an atom having shells, subshells, subshells further divided into orbitals and the orbitals having electrons. This is what the quantum numbers do. They are a set of four numbers which tell you which shell the electron is in then it tells you which subshell is it in. Then it goes further to tell you in that subshell which room is it in, that is which orbital is it in. And once it is in that room, there are only two electrons. Out of those two, which one is it? 
That is the job of the four quantum numbers. So let us go to them one by one. The first quantum number is known as the principal quantum number. The principal quantum number is represented by the letter N. And it tells you about the size and energy of the, of the orbital present in a shell. It actually indicates the shell to you. The first quantum number is known as the energy level that we called, uh, that we used in the Bohr's orbits. And the energy level n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, is equal to 4, 5. These shells are the energy levels. That is, as 1 has the least energy, 2 has more, 3 has even more, and 4 has more, and it goes on. So, the first quantum number is known as the principal quantum number, represented by small letter n, which tells you about the energy level or the shell and of the uh, electron, of the orbit of the electron in which shell is it present. Now, what is the number of orbitals in a shell? If you take the number n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2 as a number because it's a set of numbers, so we are mathematically dealing with it. With it. The number of orbitals in a shell can be calculated by the formula n square. So the first shell can have how many orbitals? 1 square, it can have only 1 orbital. The second shell is 2 square, it can have 4 orbitals. 2 square would be 4, so it can have 4 orbitals. 3 square would be 9, it should have 9 orbitals and so on. So what is the number of orbitals present in a shell? It, is, it can be calculated by n square and what is the number of electrons then that can be present in a, uh, in a shell? Obviously if n square is the number of orbitals then in one orbital there can be only two electrons. Since there can be only two electrons in an orbital, the number of electrons in a shell can be calculated by the formula 2n square. So this is how we mathematically deal with it. So the number of orbitals in a shell is n square and the number of electrons in, a, in an orbital, uh, in a shell would be 2n square because each orbital has two electrons. Now this was the first quantum number which was known as the principal quantum number. Let us now come to the next quantum number. The next quantum number is known as the azimuthal quantum number. It is represented by the letter L and it tells you about the angular momentum. But let me come back to my original story. We now know about the shells. The next thing I told you that shells have subshells. So the azimuthal quantum number tells you about the subshell. The azimuthal quantum number is known as the angular momentum uh, quantum number or it is known as the subsidiary quantum number. These are the other names for it but it gives you an idea about the subshell present in an atom. It defines the 3D shape of the orbital. I'll go into these details in a later video. For a given, how do you calculate the number of subshells present in a shell? For any value of n, the number of subshells is always equal to the number of shells. The number of subshells is always equal to the number of shells. So the first shell has one subshell. The second shell has two subshells. Third has three and fourth has four and fifth has five. But their numbers, the quantum numbers allotted to them are not 1, 2, 3 according to the shell. The quantum numbers assigned are the first subshell that is present is assigned the number 0. And the next one is assigned 1, 2. So obviously the first shell would have only one subshell and the first value to be assigned should be 0. The second has 2, so first value is 0, second should be 1. In n is equal to 3, there should be 3 subshells having the value of 0, 1, 2. Do you see this? L should have a value of 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2. And if you have to put this in a formula, how would you calculate the subshells? For any given value of n, L should have values from 0 to n minus 1. 
because the number of values has to be the same and since we are considering the first value to be 0 it should be n minus 1 should be the last value I hope I'm clear so if n is 1 l should be 0 having only one value if n is 2 l should also have two values 0 and 1 if n is 3 l should have three values 0 1 2 if n is 4 l should have four values 0 1 2 3 so these are the subshells the 0 subshell the 1 subshell the 2 subshell and the 3 subshell these are numbers assigned now each subshell has been given a name the name actually is only a letter the zero subshell is called s the p the first subshell once the value of l equal to 1 is called a p subshell value 2 is called d value 3 is called f 4 is g and 5 is h Mainly S, P, D, F out of all the elements that we know, we go up to G. We still do not know elements which have uh, a value of H2. But let me just tell you that these subshells have been given, uh, have been given certain names, that is certain letters. The value of 0 is S, P, D, F, G and H. So, we now come to the second quantum number which was the azimuthal quantum number and we learned that that tells us the number of subshells present in an uh, in a shell